Remember yesterday when I showed you how to make a simple prompt to create branded images on Midjourney? Today we're taking it to the next level using something I call the branded Midjourney prompt generator, which will actually help you generate advanced prompts that will keep you really on brand really easily. I'm Mark DeGrasse, founder of AI Branding Academy, and today I'm gonna to give you a next level use of Midjourney. We're gonna to use two different tools, both the branded Midjourney prompt generator and another tool I call the brand image creator that actually uses a custom GPT. Now, don't be scared if you've never used a custom GPT before. It works exactly like ChatGPT. It just has specific parameters that I put in place to make it a lot more useful and specific to the task at hand. So we're gonna run the GPT first and create a list of images that should be used by your brand. And then we're going to take that, put it into the branded mid-journey prop generator. And you're going to have a really specific protocol for creating as many branded images as you want using mid-journey. All right. Like I said, uh, you know, you don't want to just create any image for your brand. There's specific images that really fit your brand style. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're actually going to use the branded image topic generator to just give you a list of images that really represent uh, what your brand is all about. And it's going to be driven off of something we call the brand pillars. If you don't have brand pillars, uh, don't worry. I'll include a link to help you generate those. Uh, but you basically just need some specific elements of your brand in order for it to generate a list of images that will then represent present your brand in all of your online graphics. All right, so here it is, the branded image to topic generator. We're just gonna click on, I need branded image topics. Now you can see it looks exactly like your typical ChatGPT interface, but uh, this one has a lot of parameters that I put in place to help you generate the images that you need without having to query and copy and paste prompts. All, all this GPT does is all of that work for you. So I'm gonna click, I need branded image topics, and it'll go ahead and get to work. And so it's going to ask you for your brand pillars. And if you don't have that, uh, that's okay. Just put in as much information as you have. Maybe just copy and paste your about page. But I'm going to use the same brand we tried yesterday, which is dads and autism, because that is on the front of my mind right now. There we go. Thank you for the detailed image about your brand. Please review the branded image topic themes below and select the one that fits your business best. And so this is uh, really where you start to make it specific to your brand. So you have community and collaboration, empathy and connection, authenticity and real life stories, resiliency and strength, family and parenthood, diversity and inclusion. Now, now these aren't, it's not a big list. <laughs> so these are specifically built based on my initial prompt, which uh, gave it all the information it needs to give me a suggestion that actually makes sense. So I'm going to go with Thor. I think resilience and strength sounds pretty cool and is really uh, what the, the show is about. So again, this is just specific to your brand. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. All the answer that you need is the consistent answer. So think in those terms. Excellent choice, resilience, and strength aligns beautifully with your brand's mission and encouraging strength through challenges and celebrating tri triumphs and fire. <laughs> in fatherhood. Uh, and here you go. So here's the imagery guide. Style, warm, authentic, featuring natural light and candid moments. Type, lifestyle photography, showcasing fathers in everyday settings. Symbolic imagery of strength, mountains, bridges, and emotive por portraits. Uh, search guidelines guide, or keywords like father and child overcoming obstacles, family resilience, heartfelt moments. And then you have the actual uh, topics. So we have a father helping his child with a task, symbolizing patience and guidance, a dad cheering on his child during a milestone moment, a father and child walking together in a park framed by sunlight, bringing through trees, hands of a father and child intertwined, emphasizing connection and support. And you just see they're just, you know, ideas. And the neat part about this is you don't have to think very much. It's actually telling you exactly what type of imagery is representing based on its database of content. And you're good to go. So now all you have to do is just grab one of these. Now we're going to grab one. Um, I'm going to do a symbolic bridge or uh, image of a bridge. Uh, yeah, let's see, Genesis, a small victory, close with father smiling warmly, exuding optimism. I, I like this. So you know, this show is about fathers and strength. So I'm going to do a close up of a father smiling warmly, exuding optimism and strength. I'm going to copy that. Now I'm going to open up what I call the branded mid-journey prompt generator. Um, so this has all of the protocols that I talked about yesterday. And it, what it does is it outputs here where you can see it has some of this, uh, I call it code for mid-journey, where you have dash dash as, aspect uh, 16.9, stylized 100, chaos 0. Um, these are different elements that tell mid-journey specific things. Now I'm not going to get into you know, all the terms you can use in mid-journey uh, because all you really need to do is fill out a few of these fields and the rest of the work is done for you. So I'm going to input the image description here. I'm going to say paste. 
Now the color scheme summary. Uh, this is something that uh, you know you'll need to generate. You should have it from yesterday, but you could do something as simple as uh, black, gold, and white, or whatever it is. Um, just basic parameters is good enough. I actually have my specific parameters. We call it the brand color scheme. And here you have our primary colors and secondary colors and neutral colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, all that really matters is you can use the hex code or you could use the color name. Uh, I'm going to grab the color name, and it's going to want to put it into uh, a bunch of different lines and we don't want that so i'm just gonna go ahead and just put this in with commas in between so that way it doesn't make a big mess out of my prompt now just know it doesn't matter if it's a mess because uh it'll know what you're trying to do uh but this makes it easier for me to present so we're going to do that so i'm going to say go ahead and copy or cut and then i'm going to put it in here and I'm just going to say uh, brand colors are. And there you go. Okay. Now you select the mood. Now the mood, uh, I'm going to get super into how this works, but if you look at this imagery database, you could see how the moods correlate with the specific aspect of the pictures. And what I did was use ChatGPT to research all these things, basically translating moods into all the different elements of photography that you'd want to convey that mood. And so if you look at this line, adventure is conveyed by... Uh, let's see, color depth, bold, vibrant, sharpness, high level of sharpness, contrast, high contrast, saturation, high saturation, noise, low to moderate noise, and then finally visual hierarchy, dynamic, immersive composition with rich colors and exciting elements. So, th so this is AI's perspective of what uh, an adventure image would mean. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here. And I don't like confidence. I could do adventure. Adventure actually does fit the brand. Uh, or I could do intensity, empathy, uh, you know, let's go adventure. I like adventure. Uh, now, this realism, this is where we said realistic uh, yesterday, but now you could do stylized, naturalistic, hyper-realistic, all these different things. If you want it to just look like a real image, just use photo-like imagery. And then style, uh, this is more the style of uh, the artwork. Um, now, if you're doing realism, just use photorealism, uh, but you have a bunch of others. And you could select any of these. And these could basically be your illustration style is what we call it for branding. Uh, moving forward, but just make sure you don't switch this up too much. Just pick one and go with it. So I'm going to stick with photorealism. Our actual one uh, is a little bit different. Actually, I haven't even selected it for the brand yet, but once I do, then I'll start using that. I like to have both a realistic set of images and then also uh, you know, some illustration because it helps break up the marketing. But I'm going to leave it as photorealism. Aspect ratio, this would be your landscape, 16.9. Uh, uh, resolution, keep it at 8K. This is just high quality. And then stylization, uh, for realism, just do zero. Uh, but if you are doing illustration or you do want it to be fantastical, then uh, you could have, have it stylized, but just expect some weirdness uh, to happen. Now, everything's done. Uh, chaos. Chaos is like, the, I'll call it like the grunge factor. Um, you don't don't use that unless you do have a like tactical brand or something that would want that kind of styling. Just leave it at zero. Uh, and then there you have it. So all you have to do from here is simply copy this output and I'm going to go into Discord. Again, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to say slash imagine tab and paste and enter. And that's it. You know, and again, this, this phrase will actually work on the free version. So if you are using the free version, this will work. Like you could still use this exact phrase and it'll produce the same thing as it does in Pro. Maybe not as fast and you'll have to go find it through a bunch of junk. Uh, but overall, it's it's pretty standard. So and, and here, you, if you're wondering like, what is the, all these words? It's just the all the stuff you selected put together with commas. And let's see what it did. There you go. That looks like a... Uh, close up of a father smiling warmly, exuding optimism and strength. Uh, that's super cool. And so now all I have to do is pick one. So again, I'm going to show you a couple more factors here. This is kind of your advanced tutorial. Uh, if you click on here, I say, ah, you know, I kind of like one. One says wisdom. Uh, that's a guy who you could listen to stories from, let's say. <laughs> okay. So I could do more versions of that by clicking V1, or I'm going to put U1, which is upscale. And here you go. Now, just since this is an advanced tutorial, you do have some other features where you could uh, use. The ones I use the most are probably zoom out. And zoom out I typically use because I want to fill a different space. Like let's say I have a Canva graphic and I want to move it around. Then I want some more wiggle room. 
versus this is going to cover an entire landscape. Now I could uh, zoom out two times. Um, I could vary. I could create another bunch of images that are uh, using essentially the same character and styling in new images. I can make a square. Uh, these arrows will add... Uh, in certain directions. Uh, you could say like, I don't know how much it is, but I'd say probably 25%. You could add image up. So maybe I want the top of his head. Maybe I want uh, more of a chest up view. So I might move it down. <clears throat> this will actually allow you to do all that. Um, and let's, I'll just show you how one works just so you get the idea. But I just recommend coming in here and playing around. I'm going to zoom out 1.5 just because I might want to use this in different contexts. And Again, with this really close up view, you don't have a lot of flexibility. I can't zoom in more because then you're just going to be like, here's his nose. Uh, but if you uh, zoom out again, now you could add space. Like, let's say I use this on a home page image and I want to have text on the left, but I'm like, Ugh, it's just he's too close to the left. I don't want him, you know, the words covering his face. And so I want to add uh, more space. And so zoom out essentially adds more space over all of it. And so here you can see it's 45% done. And now you can see, okay, now we're seeing more of his upper body and we're seeing uh, more of the top of his head. And so again, uh, just gives me more flexibility uh, to use this in my designs. It gives you another four and then you would just select one of these. And so I'm going to go with uh, three. Now I'm just going to say U3 and voila. I have another image. Now, if I was doing like a whole brand, I might come back to my image generator and I'm just going to copy, paste, copy, paste. I'm going to keep all those other parameters, but I'm just going to keep on adding these in. So now I have a bunch of images I could use and it only took me a few minutes to do. So there you have it. This is your advanced mid-journey tutorial. Uh, we will still probably use mid-journey in future videos during the challenge, uh, but this gives you an idea of more of an advanced AI protocol and uh, advanced use of both uh, branded imagery and the mid-journey platform. So I hope you enjoyed mid-journey. Uh, we're going to move on tomorrow. I'm going to keep you guessing what it's going to be, uh, but go ahead and tune back in. We're going to have a new tool that we're going to use, and uh, this one has to do with content generation, specifically text generation. So if you're looking to write some articles or copy or uh, even just an email. We're going to start simple. Uh, tune in tomorrow and you're going to see another tool that you could use to write uh, some creative copy.